All right, everyone, welcome back to CIS 125. Um, hopefully you had a little bit of uh, enjoyable time off on Monday. There was that extra credit that I sent out. I'll still accept it by the end of the week, I suppose. Uh, check the announcement to see what that was. You can do a little bit of, you can get a little bit of extra credit by doing a little bit of research on the holiday. Uh, one thing is, it's interesting. It's the, it's the first new holiday since like 1983. Uh, so you can research that and it's Juneteenth. So you can read about the history of it and do some extra credit. Uh, extra credit's always nice. So having the holiday on Monday isn't going to affect our uh, our week. We'll still be able to do what I wanted to do this particular week. And uh, we'll just get into it here where in the module, well, this particular week is focused on backgrounds, focused on an environment, focused on where does your character exist? So last week, and I'm getting through the grades and so forth, Last week, you made some characters, and from what I've seen so far, very impressive. I'm seeing the range of people's work there. That's always cool. It's one of the things I like about this class. It's a very creative class, and uh, I get to see what all of you put together. Now, we're going to look at it in the um, backgrounds of your, of your projects, and the background itself can be a character, not just um, the, uh, the main protagonists and the like. So... I'll jump into the uh, explanation of the assignment, and then we'll look at what we need to do, what we need to learn in order to do that. Now, one of the things is we're going to look at the concept of strokes. We have fills and we have strokes in Adobe Animate. And what we've been working with so far are fills. I didn't fully explain it last time. Now I will contrast it with strokes. But it's a couple of ways to draw, a couple of ways to create characters or backgrounds using fills or strokes. This week is going to be about strokes, as I'll explain in a moment. So you're going to create a project folder on your computer. You're going to set up the defaults of the project as listed there. Put your name on the file. Draw and color a background where your character would have a scene. So we're only going to focus on one at the moment. Obviously, as we go on, you're going to get more complex. But for this assignment, you're going to create one scene, one world, one place where your character exists. Note, it's bold for a reason. You must use the line tool to create this environment. As the lecture showed, this simple tool can be used to create complex drawings. So with anything creative, the more uh, tools in your toolbox, the more you can do, the more you can create. So maybe you feel you're very good at the brush tool or whatever way that you know now, good. But why not further try to grow and do more? So this week, I'm going to look at the line tool and its related types of drawing tools. And you have to do the assignment with that tool. Now, it may be not exactly what you envisioned. It may be too difficult. It may be annoying. To, it may be whatever. But that's why there's also extra credit. Because if you want to do, scroll down here, I should put that bold. Uh, if you want to also do another background on the way that you like, okay, extra credit. Now, you do have to do the one the way I'm saying it, the way I'm going to show you in the lecture. And if you further want to do it your way, extra credit. But the line tool is the main way that you're going to draw your backgrounds in this assignment. Simple or as complex as you want, but, you know, as I've said, I can tell with those that do well, that they put more work and more effort into their work. If it's just, you know, one line on the horizon, yeah, there's my world, it's line world, you know, one line. Well, uh, that might not be what I'm looking for. So export it as a PNG. We saw how to do that last week. That's how you turned in your work. And this is another one of these collaborative assignments where we see each other's work. Um, how did you like looking at each other's work on the previous assignment? Interesting, right? To just kind of see the variety of what people have done. Maybe there's a little bit of self-consciousness of, oh, I don't want people to see my work. It's not done. And that's fine. But if you're working in a kind of a creative job, you're often going to be dealing with colleagues or employers, um, peers and the like. And you will often have to see each other's work and you can get stronger from it, from their feedback and the like. So that's part of the assignment. You're also going to reply to your classmates, at least two. You can do more if you want. 
but at least two classmates in a response here. There's the grading. You must use the line tool. Again, don't be surprised if you don't get a good grade if you use it, if you use other tools, because you just do another background for extra credit, up to three points with a different tool. So we're going to need to see the differences between the tools in this lecture. So in order to learn what I want to show here, we're going to do it in two different ways. One, just a general kind of uh, intro to the tool, and then after that, a more focused, guided thing. So let's get into Adobe Animate here and select the full HD preset, just a, a file to work with. So I'll go with full HD. Now, the, uh, we talked about frame rate and all of that on a previous lecture, and I might not have shown exactly, here's the button that you press to change it. But hopefully, as you kind of explore the software, you, you notice a thing or two. So here, when you've got the project file, this document has all of these speakers. There's the frame rate. If you didn't find frame rate previously, right there, as soon as you start a file, when you, when you create a file as well through the file new menu, it also is a place there to select your frame rate. So on the other screen, where it's just quickly create a, create a file. Okay, give you a file, but the frame rate might not be right. And then here it is where to set it very easily within this document. Uh, and this is the subtle but complicated thing about Animate that there's a panel everywhere. And depending what you've clicked on, you've got options. And depending what tool you've selected, you've got other options. So by selecting just the empty document, you get these properties of the document, like dimensions and such, background color and such, and frame rate. Now, I would recommend let's switch our, let's switch our background color over to something besides white. Because when you're drawing on a pure white background, sometimes that can cause you to not notice things. Like, let's say you're drawing a character that's going to have white, white eyeballs, right? But you didn't actually paint them white. And then when they walk in front of a tree, you see through the eyes. Well, that's because we were lulled into having a white background and we thought we filled in the white of the eyes, but they're not actually filled in. And when it walks in front of a tree, you see through it. So choose any other color besides white. Uh, you can go over here to the color mixer and maybe you a very off white somewhere here. You have all of these ways to mix a color formula. If you switch over to the S or saturation, you can then get, get various shades of black and white. So it's off white. Pure white, I've found in the past, can give you that problem. So off-white. And I think this gray here is too gray. So you can go over to the color mixer there. And I had, I think, F7, 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 if you want an exact color. Let's save our file. I'm just going to put it to the desktop, create a new folder. Today is 621. Just call it whatever, practice 621. Layer one, let's name it, let's rename it to fills. Create another layer called strokes. Lock the strokes layer. We're gonna draw a little bit on the fills. All right, so fills, we've already done it. Classic brush tool. There's also fluid brush tool. But under classic brush, it even tells you right here very subtly, you are drawing with a fill. So like, can we see selector right there? So, I'm drawing with a fill, any color, draw a little robot, 
you want. All right, so I have a character. Now, I have the outlines of the character and I showed previously, you can easily change your, anything you draw is very malleable. You can always change it. So I've drawn something, actually I wanted it another color. So with the select tool, select, change it to something else. This is, you've done this, this is nothing new. You have to be careful here, remember, are you drawing in the regular mode or did you accidentally turn on the uh, object drawing mode? Be careful there. Uh, last time when we were here, people had used this mode accidentally. It's very easy to turn on for whatever reason. It's just J on the keyboard. Maybe you accidentally hit J. And now when you try to fill in colors, it doesn't work because you drew it with the wrong mode. You know, this looks exactly the same as that, but the problem is it's not going to be fillable with a color. These are fillable, but this one isn't because I drew it as objects. Now, I showed a couple of you, so if you know the answer, shout it out. But uh, what do I do if I accidentally drew those as objects rather than regular lines? Anyone remember? I want them as regular fills. They're not regular fills. You just go up to modify break apart. Kind of an interesting command for what it does. It kind of simplifies it, I guess. Should be modify simplify maybe, but break apart control B. That's a way that if you drew the wrong way, like these were supposed to be plain old lines like this, um, a plain old shape, but here I drew these accidentally as a drawing object. So selecting them, control B, now they're a regular shape. Very subtle thing, but very important thing for you to know. And a few of you that did that last time I showed you, but now everyone should know. So, okay. And I can fill that in with color. Well, I'm going to lock this layer. What I've been drawing here looks like it's got an outline and then a color inside. Technically, it's all being drawn with what are known as fills. Contrast that with a stroke. So I'm going to lock the fills layer and hide it and then unlock the strokes layer. Strokes can be done in many different ways. Um, within your tools over here, we've got one called line tool. With the keyboard shortcut N. Selecting that, now on the side over here shows you, okay, fill in or select your stroke color. Tool says select the fill color, the line tool says select your stroke color. So it has this variety of settings, transparency, sizes, et cetera. But notice that says stroke. I'll choose some size, I'll choose some color. Okay, straight line, straight line. I'm going to draw a square. Notice it's subtle over here, but on the tools, this color and this color, fill color, stroke color, and they indicated with. And select your color. You can select your color either over on the tool property or down here on the color picker that way. Fill and stroke. And when I get the paint bucket, fill those in. Now with this particular tool also, the problem is that if you didn't, um, if you didn't fill in the shape completely, and then you tried to fill in color, so it won't fill in. 
It needs to be a complete shape. That's why in my examples over here, I overlapped it like that. That is not a complete shape. So, okay, I'll go to the uh, selection tool. I'll go to the edge of the line. I can still fully manipulate these lines. Make it touch. It'll snap into place by default because we have the snap option over here. I mentioned this tool previously, uh, or this option of this tool, this little magnet. This can be very helpful sometimes, and it can be very annoying what you're trying to accomplish. So, in this case, yeah. Other times that will get in my way. That one doesn't seem to have a keyboard shortcut. You have to manually remember to turn it on and off. And again, the outline of this is, this is weird how animate kind of shows this. I clicked on it because I've selected it. And then when I click over here, it, it turns off. And then when I click it here, okay, it's actually on. But when I click it off, it's on. See, it's like a gray, like a subtle gray that it's on. And then another version of gray that it's off. It's so weird how they don't have any consistency on this, as well as over here when you select here also. Yeah, turn it on to objects. Turn it off of objects, so be careful about that. But anyway, when this connects like that, all my lines are connecting. Perfect, let me fill in my color. But it's, it's connected, isn't it? No, and this is another kind of interesting, complicated thing about this. With the line tool, I have a size that I can set. I set it to, to 11. I set it to 50. Okay, it's a big line. And when you have when you have a very big line like this, here's a square that I drew. Okay, cool. It's connected. I'm going to fill in the color. No. What's happening is that animate only sees the line at the exact center of the shape and you can see that by looking at the uh, by clicking on the icon here where you've got the three icons of a of a layer you have this first icon which is going to change colors but you click this or i guess the second icon you click on that and that is your outline view this simplifies any lines that you've made down to their simple basic mathematically mathematical equation Remember, I said this is a vector drawing tool. It's all mathematically based. And so that line here that looks like it's all connected, actually, if I look at it this way, nope, it's not connected. There's seven pixels where it's not connected, even though the stroke is big enough that it looks like it's connected. Even worse over here on this very thick line here, it looks like it's connected, but nope, it's very not connected. The one I drew up on the top over here, of course, it's connected. I made the lines overlap. So that's why this snap mode might be useful. That way you know that everything does actually snap into place. See how it's snapping at the center of the line. You know, I selected size 50. So on the left, there's 25. And on the right, there's 25. And then right in the center is where that line actually exists. And that's when it's touching there. That one's touching there. It's snapping into place. That's touching. That's touching. Now, when I try to color it, it colors. I could go into this outline mode, do it from here where I know that I can see it. Now, of course, notice I fill in these fills. And when I go to outline mode, it doesn't show the fills. It just shows any of these strokes, any of these outlines. I'm going to make a new layer, or just delete everything in one more time here. I'm going to line tool, go with a small line, maybe just 10 or so. Um, draw something like that. The selection tool, I can then take it and where any lines intersect, that is a new segment. Um, it looks like I drew three lines. But there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines here. It looks like three, but there's seven. Everywhere where there's an intersection. But 
So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each individual line, each individual intersection is a line, and then I can manipulate these things. to make these other shapes. And very weirdly, very interestingly, okay, what if I click one time on this set leftover line? I can then move this separate line, click one time on this line, I can move this line. Grab this edge, stretch it out over here. Click a line itself and press delete on the keyboard. Wherever there's an intersection, animate treats it as a new segment, as a new thing. When I click here, see how that's highlighting? I can press delete. This little intersection here, delete. Here, delete. So a moment ago, I started off with one, two, three lines. Now I'm pushing them, pulling them, and intersecting them, and fully manipulating them in all of these various ways. I had these very basic lines, and now I've got this non-basic uh, shape. and click a line, hold shift to select another line, edit, copy, edit, paste, paste in place, paste in center. So I copied these two pieces on top, click one, shift, hold shift on the keyboard, shift, click the other one, edit, copy, edit, paste. Now this shape, I can put it over here maybe. Intersections. So now this is a separate section segment that I can select and delete. Segment select and delete. Select and delete. So <clears throat> this line tool, and it's got another kind of counterpart that's a little bit more complicated as well. This line tool is creating a different type of, of a drawing. It's creating strokes versus the brush tool. Brush tool, yeah, I can kind of also manipulate it, kind of. I can't exactly grab the edges in the same way as the line tool. The intersections that happened here don't behave the same way that if I click on that inter that that in that overlapping segment, I can't click on that one and then press delete, the whole thing deletes. Whereas the line tool is interesting because anywhere where there's an intersection, now actually, okay, I've got a segment here and I've got a segment here and a segment here. Here on the brush tool. Brush tool, if I try to kind of do similar things that I'm doing. That's the brush tool, but it's not going to behave the same. This is not a separate segment. See, everything's highlighting. Clicking on that highlights there. Clicking on that highlights everything. Fills work very differently. Wherever the colors are exactly the same, the exact color formula, if it's off by 1%, it's a different color. But if the colors are exactly the same, animate kind of merges all of the shapes if they are a uh, fill and then no matter if it's the same color or same or not as a as a fill it doesn't exactly merge them they are like a separate entity this piece here is different than this piece here this piece here is deletable doesn't interfere with anything else this piece over here is not on its own This is kind of creating a cool feature thing, isn't it? I can give it some eyes, some happy eyes. 
I want to give it happy eyes. You know how you do the little, you know, upside down use of a little happy eye. Okay, well, I can draw the upside down happy eye by starting, of course, with just flat lines. Not impressed. But here, happy, very happy. Or the opposite, very mad. Now they did overlap here, so then these will be the separate segments, which I then, maybe I don't even want that. Delete that, select that, delete that. Have infinite undos, basically. Take it back. Alien star creature thing is not happy. And I can spend all this time making the feet perfect. Now, I didn't even have an idea what I'm drawing. And now, okay, I got a cool little alien star creature thing with just three lines, right? A little while ago, I threw three lines. And then I'm pushing and pulling them and moving them and manipulating them and got a character. Copyright 2023. Can go in and just make changes to everything selecting the individual pieces and just going in and and um keep manipulating it so these uh this color that i dropped in into this area is its own sort of object i could still move that Now, all of these overlaps are doing weird things to, to my drawing. These are things that uh, this drawing tool or this drawing app is just something to learn compared to others, perhaps. Questions so far? Right, so to get a lot more comfortable with this um, tool, I'm going to give you a file of a background. We'll practice with it a little bit to, to trace it a little bit, um, to give you the practice to then make a background with this tool. Now, if this is the first time you ever use this tool, there's a lot to learn of it, of course. That's why we'll practice with an actual file. Now, in the uh, Canvas class, under the resources, I'll give it to you here in a moment, but under the resources, there's a, there's a link here, uh, Looney Tunes Backgrounds. And actually, I found a cool video just a moment ago about it. I'll add it here too. Looney Tunes Backgrounds. This is on an Instagram account. Uh, where someone is compiling all of these Looney Tunes backgrounds. And these will be kind of cool to, to use as an example in a moment here. So these are just some vintage Bugs Bunny cartoons and hand-drawn, but we will use these as the example for um, what we're going to do here. So let's, we'll start easy for the moment. So... Uh, this particular one, we'll use this one. So let me borrow this image and then I'll give it to you.
the uh, on the desktop in the data files folder, web design folder. Our class folder, I just put a file in here. Put a file in here. All right, so in the um, on the desktop, on the data files, in the web design folder, there's a file there called Looney1. Copy it, right click, copy. Just leave copy here. Why is my computer all slow? Anyway, control C and control V, copy it to your desktop. Take a copy of that onto your own computer. They use this as a tracing tool for um, to practice a little bit the line tool. It, it just happens to be a very angular image, so uh, this will work out well. And then maybe we'll practice with another one. But uh, just for all of us to be on the same page, uh, if you want to follow along on this, I put it into the web design, and now we need to get it into our file here. So I'll make I'll lock these old layers, hide them, make a new layer or something, file, import to stage, just like we did previously, import to stage. Make sure you take a copy of it from the web design folder onto your desktop so that you don't edit or alter the original. Be a little bit small so you can resize it with free transform tool. Similar to the um, similar to the uh, other tracing assignment, I'm going to put this onto its own layer. I'm going to lock the layer, turn it into a guide. And then on another layer, I'm going to draw on top of it. So this is practice what we've done before. You can right click that layer that you've got the picture on. Properties, guide, opacity 50, probably even lower. Bucket. Obviously, at any point, if anyone's having any trouble, raise your hand and the assistants will come and help out. <laughs> This point, you want to import that in and then on a new layer, the line tool, start drawing this. Now, again, because this is uh, totally editable at all points, um, you can make it perfect uh, depending how much time you spend on it. Now, I'm not looking for it perfect at the moment. It's just more for practice. And also for practice, I would recommend you use a different color besides black, maybe bright red, maybe bright yellow, some color. I'm going to go with red. And then for stroke, uh, what's a good size? Maybe 10, maybe 7. So it's not just going to be a matter of, OK, follow me, clip the lines here. No, you're going to think a little bit more, and you're going to do more than than what you think, for example. Um, this front surface of this box, you might say, okay, I'll start right here and I'll pull the line over here and then I'll go here and go here. Sure, you might get the result you're looking for, but instead, I would recommend to get the most out of this tool to make sure it does exactly what you expect. Here's my line. Here's my line. I'm gonna also turn off snap. Here's my line. Here's my line. Do that one again. Here's my line. The point of this is we want our shapes to be closed so that when we fill in color, it actually fills in. If there's one pixel that is not connected, it won't fill in with color. These lines are obviously overlapped, so they are connected. They will fill with color. And because of the nature of this tool, 
I can go back in and I'll show you a couple of ways to do it, the slow way and the fast way, because they're all overlapped. Then, okay, switch over to the selection tool, select a segment, delete it, select delete. Again, I'll show you a faster way in a moment. Select delete, select delete, et cetera. You might say, well, I'll just do it right. I'll just start the line. I'll just start the line here and here. Again, if if you, it looks like it might be overlapping, but it might not be because of the thickness of the line or the styling of the line. There's some lines that look like a brush stroke, but, they're, but they are a line, but with a style of a brush. And it looks like the lines are overlapping, but they're not. So to be safe that they are overlapping so that when you color it later, overlap them. And then you go in and refine it. So it's all interesting how that's all connected. It's good. you the faster way to do it. So let's say I drew the line to here and to here. All right, so I have all of these lines I've got to clean up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, lots of clicks and deletes. Here's a faster way. The eraser tool, the eraser, eraser. Okay, the eraser tool, eraser tool we've seen. Okay, you can go in, you can erase. That's not faster. But the eraser tool has a very interesting mode. It's no sense what it's what the icon is, but when you see what it does, it's amazing. Um, you select the eraser, and okay, they didn't put it down here on these other options. That's weird. They put it over here on the properties. For the properties, there's a little faucet here. Use faucet mode to remove stroke segments or filled regions. Well, that's new. Back it, it used to just say faucet mode. But now it tells you what it does. This is cool. If you turn on this faucet mode, now click, simply single click once, wherever there's these overlaps, and it's smart enough to delete the extra segment. So if I had that, if I had a line going that way out there, I had a line, I can go to the eraser tool, activate this faucet mode, delete. And again, what's interesting about this tool is you just saw me make some intersections and I deleted all of the lines, but it didn't actually break the original line. There's a, there's no break there. Even going here into outline mode, there's no break at all. Again, I'm, I'm making a line in between. We know that there's a line in between, but if I delete those segments, there's no break. So for example, here on the floor, I would um, make just a line all the way across, something like that. Here, I drew that line a little too high on the original. The bottom of that box is a little lower. Okay, no problem. I can still go in and make changes. Actually, it should be here. And then this should be here or so. So and over here, too high. Okay, just pull it down here. No problem. Doesn't look like there's one straight line all the way across, but that's okay. If I pull it across somewhere like that, these other segments can still be manipulated. So 
something like that. Eraser tool, faucet mode, clean up the lines. So with this, um, with this particular image and this particular tool, practice this for a moment. We'll take a moment to, for you to use this for a moment. Try to draw this for a moment. We'll fill in colors in a moment. we we'll just kind of try to draw this scene a bit. Um, 1256 or so, we'll just do it for a bit and then we'll move on. I've got more to talk about, but. Just practice with this a moment. If you have any trouble, call me or the assistants over, but just practice a little bit with this tool. Also, we're coming up on the break, so if you want to take a break as well, you can do so, but you can practice a bit. Temperature get better in here, we're a little bit more comfortable than this one. I log into Instagram.
Right, so wherever you're at at this point, let me show you a few more things. Uh, so using the line tool, uh, my I like personally to do those overlaps of the lines so that then we know that it is actually intersected. Then I can start filling in colors. Now, I'm going to hide. I'm not done with it, of course, but I'm just going to hide my tracing layer for a moment. Um, you've got the, uh, the visibility. You can turn it on and off completely. I just want to see what I've drawn so far. So I've got some of these boxes here, and um, I'll finish the rest in a bit. But I've got some shapes that are filled in, which I can start to drop colors in. So with the paint bucket, I could just drop in colors. Cool. But let me show you this, where let's say I wanted to get a little bit fancier with sort of the uh, colorization of things. So let's say I um, dropped in colors here, and just some simple, basic uh technique of colorization to kind of give it depth is where there's a light source you've got some character or background or whatever the thing closest to the light source is brighter the thing further from the light source is darker and then you've got a middle value so just a very basic concept of lighting and such closer to the light source a little brighter further from the light source a little darker with variation of course 
So let's say I've got, ignoring the original drawing, let's say I've got a light source over here. Here's the sun. So just to kind of keep it totally simple, there's just light coming at it at that direction. So if you can visualize, okay, if there's a light source there, well, let's say it's a lamp then. You don't want the sun in a warehouse, right? So it's a lamp and it's pointing at the boxes. So that would mean that this part of the um, this part of the box over here, closer to the light source would be brighter. And this part further over here would be darker. Now, of course, if you have more experience and um, can fully visualize environments and so forth, you can get very, very more complex very quickly, but very simply, there's a light source, the parts that are closer are brighter, the parts that are further are darker. So I want to make some brighter tones over here, some darker tones over here. So starting with the um, eyedropper tool, I can grab the base color and then, okay, we've got a color mixer, better yet there's the window color panel, which then pops up here to get colors. Well, we have HSB, brightness this slider so darker and lighter versions of the color saturation brightness so if we've got a light source on the left and some part of the background here is going to be slightly brighter because of the light source i need a brighter version of the color i started with my base color with the eyedropper tool I went over to my um, color panel. In this case, I want a brighter color. So over on S saturation, I can make that some shade of a brighter orange in my case. You can see it down there at the bottom, the original color plus the new color. So you can compare them. There's plenty of ways to then do the color that I wanna do here. Like let's say I want the brush tool and I can, okay, I'll just, start to color the, the brighter part. Obviously the problem here is that the, that the brighter color is overlapping all of these lines and getting weird, messing it up. Well, again, no problem. Animate has, this, has these various modes that I, I don't really see them in other software. I think some of the other software is starting to catch up, but Adobe Animate's been around like literally 30 years and it's just really refined its tool set. So I want to, with the brush tool, maybe color things in, but like when I color with a coloring book, I want to stay inside the lines. You can do that in Animate. You just turn on the right mode, which is right here. Classic brush tool has a bunch of modes, and one of them is here, brush mode, paint normal, paint fills, paint behind, paint selection, paint inside. Now, paint inside and paint fills are going to be similar, but paint inside Watch this, I'm painting all over the place. Oh, I'm only painting there. By going to this mode here of paint inside, where I start to paint in the particular shape that animate sees it is where the color will exist. I went over the line here, no problem. Animate fixes it for me. Now I'm trying to draw on the edge over here, this perfect bit of highlight here. I went over to everything else. Nope, Animate cleans it up for me. Really, really large brush size. Now be careful here. I wanted, okay, a big overlap like that. Technically, I started to click over here. So it filled in the color on that shape over there. No, I want it on this shape here. So where, where you click is where it's going to fill the color for you. In my case, it also fills it in on this shape here for some reason. I don't know, you can select it and delete it. But anyway, here I filled in this color, a brighter version of the color. I don't like the result, it's not a straight line. This is a box, it's straight, it's too much of a curve. Again, I can infinitely edit this. I can um, get the eyedropper, sample my original color, get the bucket tool and just drop in the color to my mistake and it takes it back. 
So any of these changes that are made, I can, if I'm, if I'm too far into an undo, I can still fix it with paint bucket, eyedropper, you're gonna use that very, very often. I for eyedropper to select, and then fill the color, take it back. Eyedropper to sample this color, go to my color panel, go to my saturation, give me a brighter shade of it. Art that I want as the highlight. still manipulate all of this. Maybe I can select that shape and then go to my tool over here to straighten. Not the tool, but the option. Now I've got more of a straight line over here. I can still fully manipulate all of this. Obviously faster, easier ways to make the perfect um, Perfect lines. I'm just kind of showing generally that you have so many things you can do. And in my case, it did look like it did break the line at some point because if I click here and try to delete that, it deletes too much. I think when I did the straighten, it kind of manipulated it more than I wanted. So yeah, showing it here, it did break my line for some reason. So there might, yeah, it's just so subtle. If I zoom in 2000%, I see a little gap right there. I don't need to zoom in 2000%. I can uh, toggle on and off the outline mode. Let me see, okay, there's a break for some reason. So make those touch, snap object. This is its own object, yeah, so there's that. Set my saturation to a brighter color to have the highlight. Um, sample my color here. This time go to the brightness to get a darker version of the color. In the shadow, again, there's more complexity to it all. And what about blending the colors and all of this complexity, of course. But very simply, if you've got if you can visualize some light source, the things that are closer to the light source are a little brighter. The things that are further are a little darker. This is obviously a very, it's a harsher sort of cell shading style. Maybe I want to blend it. That's it. That's it. I want this color to blend into that color. We can do that. And this is too much of a bright color. It looks brighter on the projector, actually. I want everything that I create in Adobe Animate. So that um, brush being set to various modes over here. So paint normal will paint on top of the lines and break the lines, the, the strokes. Um, paint fills only. I can see I kind of painted everywhere, but then when I let go of the mouse, it only painted inside where there's where there's a where there's a closed shape. See right here. Go this far like this. So it, there's a closed shape here. I'm not sure why I didn't close it there. Oh, uh, there's already a color there. That's what that's doing. So there's already a color there. But there isn't a fill color. It doesn't leave color there. This is a closed shape here, but there's no color there, right? That's why I said at the beginning, change your background color from white to something else so that you see that it's that it's an actually empty area. And so on this particular mode, wherever there's a fill, 
it'll paint, paint behind. I never really find any use for this one, but paint behind. Let's see, so I paint on top of it all and it paints behind. So I guess this is, if you've already got a fill, it's gonna paint behind the fill, but almost everything's gonna have a fill color already. Maybe as you're building up the scene, maybe that's when things are empty. So you paint behind it, I guess you can find a use for it. And selection, okay, on this one, you have to first click to select with the select tool. So this bit of color here is selected, then brush tool, then paint selection. And there it's only in the selected color. And I just showed the um, paint inside. You start painting is where it stays. Now this particular design is, I didn't even plan it, but on this one, it's all perfectly um, perfectly straight lines in a, in a warehouse. Okay, this tool can be used for more complex things. If I go back to the Looney Tunes um, account, I'm gonna grab another one. Now, obviously it's not gonna be perfect for everything. Like let's say this waterfall here, uh, this waterfall looks nice because it's also got the edges of the foamy, water where it's going over the edge that's going to be very hard to draw in with the line tool but all of these other shapes even like these little curvy uh, parts of the foliage can be drawn with the line tool you can push and pull the lines so not everything is perfect with everything this one where it's got a lot of um, whatever it's tree bark right there that's going to be a lot of work it can be done but that's a lot of work uh, let's see something this is maybe kind of this one. Uh, I'm going to give you this one, this idyllic scene here. Grab this one and see how we can play with this one. This one's full of more curves. So you can grab that one. I'm gonna put it into the web design folder. And this one is called Looney 2. I'll make a new layer on that new layer, put that new background in there, turn it into a guide. And I'll show you some techniques with working on this one because it's a little bit more curvy compared to just boxes. So hide all of those things there, make a new layer, call it Looney 2. import to stage. Then I'm going to grab that second one, resize it if you need to. Click or right click the layer, opacity lock guide. Right, so this one is, um, can, also be done with the line tool. And I'm not worried about like getting every little detail of the design. Little bumps right here, I'm sure. But then I kind of see this as one kind of curve over here. That's the curve. There's a lot of detail in the grass here. I'm not gonna worry about that. Just for the practice of this tool, I'm going to try to get the general shape of things. So again, uh, with some color, I would recommend some big, bright, obvious color. Don't just select black because that's the same thing that if I've got a background element that is dark and I draw on top of it dark, I'm not gonna see the difference between my colors. With a very obvious bright red or yellow or whatever, you will see the difference of the line. So from here to here, maybe start my line and then I can manipulate it. Now, here's more of these shortcuts. Instead of switching line tool and then 
selection tool back and forth. Here's a shortcut. So obviously N to select the line tool and then hold control on the keyboard and you temporarily get the selection tool. See that I'm in the line tool holding down control. I temporarily get the selection tool where I can then manipulate my lines. So somewhere around here. It's not a straight line. It's got a little bit of a curve there. And tool, start from here to here or so. From here to here. Select tool. Push it and pull it. Now, here's the part where, okay, if this is a segment, so if I manipulate this a little bit, the segment is here, and I've got to manipulate that too. That looks weird. So here's the part, perhaps, okay, I need to erase. So with the eraser tool, set on faucet. Take that one out and then see about how it can be manipulated. We we'll kind of get a little bit of that curve there. No, it seems like Animate has some of these more weird and interesting tools that the others haven't added yet, or maybe their version is slightly different. That's one of the things that really stands out on this app that you can manipulate these lines in very interesting ways. This one over here, maybe pulling it somewhere around here. Add a little bit. So I'm way up here. So with these shortcuts, it definitely pays to kind of try to memorize these shortcuts because you can jump between them very quickly instead of, okay, mouse, click here, mouse, click here, do this. If your hand's already on the mouse and your hand's already on the pen or the keyboard and such, you just quickly switch between tools easily. Again, I know that the original has lovingly rendered uh, grass and so forth. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about trying to take straight lines to become curved lines, uh, giving you the idea of when lines overlap, they um, become their own individual segments. Racing with the eraser tool faucet mode, clean, clean things up. I can further um, select a segment and go in with smoothen. This is selection tool, select a segment. I can smoothen it, I can straighten it. This little segment here is not quite right. Okay, select just that area, select tool or lasso tool. Select a piece there, see what happens if you smoothen it or straighten it. This tree, just kind of a line. This might take some thought here. So um, this line to up here or so, but then kind of manipulate it somewhere around here. This line goes out here or so, but then I will manipulate it somewhere around there. It's just a different way of thinking because I know that this is a curve and with the brush tool, yeah, I'll just draw the uh, I'll just draw the, the curve so easy with the brush tool or with the pen tool. Again, uh, the brush tool. For the assignment, you will be doing it with lines for getting out of your comfort zone to practice. And then you can do the extra credit to then make a background with your preferred tool. I suppose you could do the same background with the required line tool and then do another one for extra credit with the brush tool, the same background, I guess or perhaps the required one with the line tool and then another background where your character could exist with the brush tool. 
extra credit. The point of it is practice. So here's this line here, but I want it to be like this. Straight line with a little bit of natural curve. On this, um, also in your different zoom levels, this is an interesting also for the app, depending on your zoom level, if you're zoomed out a lot, 100%, whatever, the manipulation of your shapes behaves a certain way. And then when you're zoomed in, the manipulation be behaves slightly different as well. So on this line, a little curve there, here to here, a little curve, clean up with the faucet. Got my hand on the undo. Now with this tool, let's say uh, I wanted this part of the tree here. Yeah, there's all the nuances, whatever. But let's say I want just a kind of a curve like this. The brush tool, yeah, I just draw it. But I want to do it with the line tool. But the line tool will be a little bit more complex, depending on what you've already got there. Okay, let's say here. Let's say from, let's say, let's say from the, from the line here, and I want to curve that down. The problem here is there's already all of these segments in my way. That's, that's not what I want. So you might try this. What if I draw the line not touching somewhere? What if I manipulate and prepare the line a little bit while it's not touching anything and then select it to move it, click once to select, and then move it into place? Whenever there's overlaps, it makes a new segment. And that was getting in my way a moment ago. So draw the line elsewhere, manipulate it, put it where you need it. You see, I was not going to be able to get that curve by drawing it directly here. There's too many other things in the way. That's doing that, that's doing that. So, okay, draw it elsewhere, put it in place. line here, curve it here. And from here to here or so, curve it here. Clean up my overlaps. Oh, okay. <laughs> so over here, I want this little curve here. I can't quite do it here. Too many things in the way. So, okay, draw it over here, curve it over here, move it, move it into place. Even just stretch it here. Yeah. So move it here. That overlaps. Cut that. This over here, curve this. Uh, yeah, that might have. Sometimes the magnets get in the way. Um, but yeah, this is what everyone's going to see as we um, work with tools. So this is so editable. Even after you start off with a straight line, it's completely editable. But here, there is an overlap. Again, moving to the outline tool, or not the outline tool, the outline mode shows you the, the exact inner segment 
of the of the design so that you know that it's full of overlaps. my case here, I had a line and the tree is in the way now, but I can take this edge and just pull it all the way across over here. Then I can uh, remove the segment in between. And now I've got a background part of that little hill uh, in front of the tree. Now, obviously, if I wanted to start filling in colors, I need overlapping, um, I need overlapping lines to, to have the color. I can start it as a simple line that won't matter. And after I paint bucket, get a um, color, drop the color in, I can go in and remove that segment. Maybe artistically, I don't want a line here, but I need a line just to fill in the color. Once the color exists, once there's that fill, that, allow, that stroke that allows me to add a fill, I can go in and remove the, the, the stroke. And that way I have something like that. I wasn't able to fill that color in a moment ago unless there was a complete shape. Finish the shape, add the color, and then delete the part you don't need. It's still fully editable. I can go here and I, and I really need this to be this far over here and this far over here. Paint it in with the brush tool. For the assignment, creating a um, background. This is practice, nothing to turn in. This is just practice. We can continue doing practice just to learn this tool a little bit more. I would highly recommend you look at the Looney Tunes uh, Instagram here to get inspiration, maybe, or inspiration from anywhere, and just kind of maybe grab a screenshot off of your favorite cartoon or anime or movie and just kind of see how can I make my own drawing version of it. Take a screenshot off of it and then use it in animate here. Now, I did it quickly, but I'll show you here if you're all interested in doing this. This is on Windows. On Mac, it's slightly different. Uh, but if you're on Windows, let's say, okay, oh, let's do it this way. Let's say I go over to find, I want the perfect, um, I want to get a screenshot of like a Hollywood movie. So what's a good one to borrow? This is with classic predator part one of course um shot of predator yeah let's maybe do that maybe a shot of that dog well the point is that i'm going to use a maybe i want to something cool to look say that my background is that helicopters so what if i what if i want to use that as a starting point for my assignment so uh in windows you can go to the start menu and search here for sketch, or I guess snip, depends on which version you have. But if you search sketch, it should find it either way. You have this sniping tool or snipping tool, which will let you take a screenshot. There's also a keyboard shortcut that I never memorized, but you can use the um, uh, sketch, the snip tool here to select a new, um, screenshot of an area and so this I took a screenshot of this particular part 
then in animate, I can just paste it in, it's in memory. Layer. Click paste in center. Use that as my starting point. It's extremely dark on the projector, but the uh, that's a way that's a way you can do this assignment as well. Maybe yeah, you might have a great idea out of your mind. What if you want to um, get the um, get a cool background as an example? I want this. I want this office environment as the uh, my background. So same idea with that sketch tool. Let's grab a screenshot. It's currently in memory, and then in animate, you can just onto a new layer, paste in center. And use this as my starting point as a guide for the assignment. Uh, rest of the class, I think, for for the moment, we will have it to be work time. I think I've covered the things that I wanted to cover. If people maybe have other requests and things, I think it's going to be more of a try it and work on it. There's the assignment of the backgrounds. So let's do that for a bit, and then I'll kind of check in if you want to do more. If you want to stay and do lab, you want to work at your own pace at home, whatever. We'll be here until the end of class time. If you want to further stay for open lab, you can do that for a while. But I think for the moment, it's more hands-on practicing with this tool, the requirement for the assignment. So uh, take a break if you want, and then uh, practice either finishing that Looney Tunes background or starting your own backgrounds for your assignments. To reiterate on the assignment before we wrap, um, for your assignment, create a file, name it, etc. frame rate, et cetera. Uh, draw a background, draw and color it. You can do very simple flat colors if you want. I showed you a little bit of the um, cell shading where you can just add a simple flat color. That, that'll be fine. You can keep it as Flat colors, I, I'm not going to quite touch on if you want to do the very, very complex blended colors yet. That's still something more to learn. But the, the big idea is you've got to use the line tool, practice with it. You can do an extra credit with any other tool, but for the main assignment, line tool. As simple or as elaborate as you want, export as a ping. Paste it here. Tell us a little bit about it. Don't forget this part. People sometimes forget about that. Don't just show us the, your cool background. Tell us a little bit about it. Is it based on a fictional, on a real place? Is it a fictional place you made up completely? Is there some sort of history of it? So part of the work of this class is not just this very visual aspect of things, but also the creative part. A little bit of background info about your character, background info about your environment. Next week, we're going to look at concepts more of animate, of course, but also next week, we're going to have assignments and lectures on scripts and storyboards all of, uh, for part one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were only four weeks here. Yep. So next week is the story. No, no, we're still little by little. We're still going. Exactly. That's still, that's still coming up. <laughs> and so, um, for it all to come together, drawing, background, character, scripts, storyboards. How does that actually animate in the app? All oh, that's coming up. So, it is uh, in the 126, in the part two of this class. So, there's going to be video games in there too. Once we understand how the uh, animation of it all works, then we can add that into a video game. The video game will be, you know, this stuff that we're learning so far, as well as coding and interactivity. So it's all it's all together. And then reply. Remember to reply to your classmates for the full credit. So, so let's work on that. 
Um, I'm going to turn off the recorder for the moment. And you should uh, practice and such. Take a break when you need it. Call us over if you need any help. But it'll be practice using getting better at the interface. One of the big stumbling blocks is where's the right panel? Where's the right tool? How do I do what I'm trying to do? So work on that.